I'm Danny, that witch next door, and you're listening to That Witch Podcast. Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome back to another episode here at That Witch Podcast. I'm Danny. I'm That Witch Next Door, and I'm going to be your host, your guide, your mentor, and instructor in all things magic, witchcraft, astrology, and witchy business, and how perfect. Today's episode is going to hit on all of those wonderful things. I am so excited to be talking about this today. We're coming at you today, Tuesday, June 7th, this episode's dropping, and we're at our first quarter moon in Virgo, and what a better time to talk about a practical and aligned schedule and how to actually create that for yourself than a first quarter moon in Virgo. So get your little analyzers out, get your excitement for planners and calendars and all things scheduling out. Um, And if those things are really, really difficult for you, or you struggle with those things, then you definitely want to listen to this episode because I am going to pump it up with lots and lots of tricks. Because I love planning and I love organizing and I love scheduling and I love consistency. I have a lot of fixed energy in my chart. And I also have that feisty little Gemini Mars retrograde up in my 10th house of career, right? I like to come in and stir everything up and just throw all of that, throw all of that to the wind from, uh, Time to time, sometimes more frequently than others. So don't worry, I'm the same way. I love it and I hate it. I really have both sides of the relationship. So I have all sides of the tips and advice for you here today. I am really, really excited for this one. So uh, first and foremost, when it comes to your schedule, when it comes to not just your literal physical schedule, like in your in your calendar, Um, I want you for this episode to take a big step back, okay? Have a nice big zoomed out view of your life and the word schedule and see that your schedule really encompasses, it's, it's all of your time. It's all of your time. It makes sense why we're very, very concerned with planning and scheduling, because our time is so incredibly valuable to us. And you might know, I consider our time most likely the most valuable thing uh, that we have. So it makes sense why, whether we love it or hate it, we do come back to this topic and this subject over and over again in our lives, whether it's um, creating our own schedule, living with somebody else's schedule or their boundaries, right? Uh, Blending the two or multiple together, all of these things. So the best thing to do when it comes to refreshing your mindset when it comes to creating your schedule. Okay. Really wiping that slate clean, especially if it's something that has been a really (sighs) grueling or kind of shitty process for you in the past. We're going to wipe that slate clean. And I need you to remember that when it comes to creating our schedule, there are three main umbrellas that we're working with. Okay. What I call three main priorities, actually. Uh, These priorities are listed in order of importance. Okay. And starting with the most to the least important. And within each of these priorities, again, these are each umbrellas. Within each of these fall all of the different tasks and events and activities and relationships and just ways that you spend your time, okay? I like to call this uh, part of the exercise. This is what I teach in my Think and Grow Witch mem- uh, mentorship. I like to call this three priorities, one overall vision. So these three priorities are you, your people, and your livelihood. Everything that you do with your time falls into these three categories. Um, 
you are the runner of the show. Without you, your world and your reality doesn't exist. Therefore, you're the first priority. (laughs) Got that? This is really hard. This is like probably one of the hardest parts to get through. And I think that's why I start with it first, because we've been so, so, so conditioned um, to put ourselves last, quite frankly. Um, Quite frankly, uh, we have definitely been taught for really centuries if not starting to get into thousands of years, that we are the last, last priority, okay? And the truth is, is that without each strong individual, right, we can't make up the family and then the community and then the society and then the world, okay? So the the goal and and main priority, especially when you take into consideration like, Uh, something like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? Our most basic and physical needs are the most important and at the bottom. Same concept here. But we take that even a step further um, in this particular exercise because your entire Maslow's is within um, really these first couple of categories, okay? I really could say all three. Um, When it comes to you, being your first priority, what this means when you're considering the time that you allot on your schedule for yourself, you want to be considering things like physical, emotional, and mental health, um, the care, the physical uh, care and nurturing of all of those things, personal development, and your self-education, Your spiritual practice would also be in this category, something very personal to you. Anything you do for recreation and leisure, that's also in this category. Um, Anything to do with what fuels and feeds and nourishes just you falls in that category. This can be your exercise. This can be meal times and feeding yourself, sleep times, um, again, time for hobbies and passions, right? Things that are not included under your livelihood. Um, anything to do with you is in this umbrella. Now, the next umbrella that we need to take into consideration every time we're looking at our schedule is your people, right? Uh, we are creatures of connection. We have Some have few, some have very many. Most of us, when we look at it, we actually have more than we usually think. But we have these different connections in our lives. And those also require nurturing and caregiving. Um, Hopefully, mostly out of, uh, because we want to and not necessarily obligation. But there is obligation in here. Because that's going to include any kind of dependent, okay? Any kind of dependent is going to be at the very, very top priority of the your people category here, okay? Now, to be the best caregiver you can be to any kind of dependent, we need a really solid, thriving and flourishing you umbrella, correct? So don't forget about that. That's why your dependents are in the second category here. They're at the top of the category, okay? All the mamas and the papas out there. <laughs> your dependents can be your and and I mean, again, that could be the human mamas and papas or of the fur children as well. <laughs> but if you have any kind of dependent, I get it. They almost feel as an equal to you. But the truth is, is that truly to be the best caregiver that you can be, we need a fully thriving and nourished you, okay? That's going to trickle down and genuinely encourage uh, more flourishing, more thriving energy for your dependent anyways. So again, don't put them above you. Put them put them in the next category, in the next umbrella here, but keep them at the top of that umbrella. But this also includes um, all of our loved ones, right? So our family, our friends. Um, This can even be like those relationships outside of work. Like maybe they kind of come from work or that social time while you're in your job. It's not necessarily 
for professional development. It's definitely more for personal development and personal enjoyment, those kind of things. That's all going to kind of fall into this category as well. Um, your people and your own survival and living and thriving, quite honestly, these first two categories, quite frankly, are most people's motivators for their final category, which is their livelihood. <clears throat> so this is why it's important to take all three of these into consideration when going into creating a practical and aligned schedule. Because the truth is, is that we accidentally keep these things separate. I find more often than not when we're planning our schedule and we take this like time to schedule some personal stuff in our schedule at one point. Then at a later date, we have to do like a bunch of work stuff and planning for our work schedule. So we do a bunch of that. Then, you know, we make plans with family and friends here and there. And then we wonder why as months go by, we have this crashing and this colliding of all of these worlds. And it's because most of us don't stop and just set time to do schedule and planning work from a holistic standpoint like this and take all three umbrellas into consideration and bring them all three into view when you sit down and create um, a schedule for yourself, okay? So this is very, very important. You, your people, all of your socializing, all of those connections, those dependents. Um, this can also include household needs. I would also say household needs, um, you know, beyond what you need to like survive and function. Um, those are going to fall under your people, especially because I totally see your, your house and where you live as part of your family, um, in a lot of ways. And, uh, then your livelihood, this is, if you're a business owner, this is a fucking, honestly, business owner or employee of an employer, depending on what you do for a living, this category might be huge. Meaning all the things you have to consider and take into, con like, just take into consideration for your scheduling and mapping, it might be huge. And that's what makes it feel really overwhelming to incorporate also all of your personal time and all of your socialization and your people and what they want to do. It might feel overwhelming at first to really try and keep all of these things um, in mind when you're creating a schedule for yourself. But I promise that at the end, you're going to have a much, much more aligned and practical flow of your day, of your week, of your month, and so on. Okay. So that being said, a few things that I want to, you know, that I love my disclaimers, a uh, few things that I want to disclaimer here is number one, rest is productive. So much of what goes into the first category of you is productive. Honestly, pretty much all of it. If we need thriving and flourishing you to trickle down through the rest of these umbrellas, right? To get that aligned flow for your life, then rest is productive. Recreation is productive. Being lazy is productive. Yes, in balance and in moderation. But we really have to get away from this idea that the moment we stop creating or producing, that we're not being productive. When we're recharging and rejuvenating, that is part of the overall system of production. Therefore, it is productive, okay? Um, secondly, I, I can't let you get away without telling you a little bit about boundaries. We have to. I'm sorry. Not sorry at all. Because boundaries, when it comes to your schedule, kind of the name of the game, kind of your BFF, if I'm being honest. Um, the truth is throughout all of this, I'm going to give you my, you know, different systems and tricks that I've used to create my schedule and my planning for myself. But the truth is more than anything, I have to know my, I have to be firm in my conviction and my boundaries. Okay. I can't just promise myself something over and over again and keep breaking that promise to myself. 
When we do that with a person outside of ourselves, we see the damage of doing that, right? That same damage happens when we do that to ourselves over and over again, and we keep disrespecting our own boundaries. If you keep planning a weekend at home to rest and rejuvenate, And you keep saying, you keep pushing that back and pushing that back to say yes and yes and yes to so many other things. I promise what you're doing is you're actually saying no, no, no to yourself that whole entire time. You have to take your boundaries fucking seriously. Now, one really easy way to do this is putting actual boundaries in your calendar. So I block time off for this like rest is productive and stuff like that. Well, you think that's easy for me? Of course, it's not easy for me. I, the reason I have this advice is because I don't take it half the time and I have to learn the hard way. And then I come on here and say, hmm, did you also hit burnout? Me too. Here's how I worked through it. And one thing that I've learned over the last oh, about two years is you have to put time for yourself in the calendar. Stop not putting it in the calendar. You put everything else in your calendar and you live by that calendar. Why are you not putting stuff for yourself in the calendar? One of my favorite tips in the whole world, so easy and so effective, is go into your calendar. I hope a bunch of you do this right now. (laughs) I would love to hear if you did this right now. You should let me know. Um, Go into your calendar and go to next month or this month, we're still toward the beginning of June. So if you have the availability this month, fucking do it. Amazing. If not, go to next month. If you can't go to go to August, whatever it is, go to your next available date, try to get it within the next eight weeks or so, if if you can. Um, And I want you to pick a day. That's for you. If you're able to take the whole day, hell yeah, do it. When I do that, I call it Danny Day. And that's how it goes in the calendar. (laughs) And I block the whole thing off from 12.01 a.m. to 11.59 p.m. So that there's no ability at all to book an appointment there. If an appointment gets put there, I have to manually go in and overlap it on top of that time block. Okay, that's why I do that. Um, you You really don't have to go full force, though. So the way I started making this practice, been a slow building practice, is I started by trying to book a Danny day. And I didn't used to block the whole day off. I would just like throw a note in my calendar and I would still schedule stuff around it. That's why I ended up having to block whatever the time was off. I'd end up blocking it. Um, But what I found was, okay, At the time, my schedule was in goddamn shambles. So I was like, okay, I can't do a full day right now because everything's just crazy, but um, I can do a half day right now. Or I can definitely block off an evening and let Jared know, like, I need that night. You know what I mean? So whatever it is, it could be a morning. It could be a night. It could be an afternoon. It could be a lunchtime. Take yourself to lunch, whatever it is. And when I say take yourself to lunch, if you're trying to budget, Pack a lunch and go on a picnic. That was one of my favorite, favorite things to do. You could take 20, 30 minutes to do that. It's summertime. I'm hoping that wherever you live, that you're having some kind of picnic-friendly weather. And if not, you know what I love doing and what me and Blair call it? We call it car picnics. (laughs) And we'll go park at a really pretty park or field or whatever. And I sit in the back seat with her and I make peanut butter and jelly and bring cheddar bunnies and... (laughs) and M&Ms or whatever, you know what I mean? So uh, whatever it is, go in your calendar and actually block it off. It could be 20 minutes. It could be a full day. Um, And again, you can have the intention of working up to a full day even. Communicate this with your people, right? We're remembering all of the umbrellas. Make sure that this works with your livelihood calendar. Make sure that this works with your people. If If you're bailing on your partner that day, why don't you get some verbal confirmation of that? You know what I mean? That's totally fine. But like, I would also encourage your partner to do the same thing. Hey, I'm going to start putting more time for myself in the calendar. Um, I really think, or actually the way I would say that is, I'm going to start putting more time in the calendar. I just want you to know that um, you always have that support from me as well. You know what I mean? And so you can encourage your partner or maybe it's your roommate, whoever it is. Hey, just so you know, it could be a friend someone that you 
are with a lot and count on seeing each other a lot, you can let them know, hey, just so you know, like, I'm also really supportive of this alone time for you as well. Let's spread this like a wonderful, wonderful disease of rest and recreation and genuinely taking what we used to call playing hooky. And now I'm, I think this is good enough to call a mental health day. I don't think you, I don't think I'd call this a sick day. You know what I mean? I don't think that you have to book this. I don't think that you have to be ill <clears throat> mentally or physically or even emotionally to take one of these days. This, you could look at it like a vacation day, I guess. But I think that calling it a mental health day is still really accurate because it is. It directly benefits your mental health and overall energetic well-being, quite honestly. And it's going to do that for everybody. So the more that you do this for yourself, the more that you encourage and give other people in your life to do the same thing. So watch that happy domino effect. Now, let's see here. So boundaries. Rest is productive. Okay. I'd really like to start moving into some different rituals and different systems that I have for myself when it comes to the actual calendar. We are going to take a quick minute here to pause from the show to thank our sponsor for today. This episode is brought to you by Honeycomb Collective. My absolute favorite way of tracking the astrology of the moment is with my Honeycomb Collective Personal Astrological Almanac, which if you've been around for a while, you already know this is one of my top recommended tools that I use literally every single day. Each almanac is a custom-made planner and ephemeris with transit data specific to your natal chart, in addition to the mundane transits affecting us all. Not only can you learn to interpret astrology for yourself as you watch your life and events line up with the timing of the transits, but you can customize everything about this almanac from the housing system, the artwork, the different asteroids that you see or you don't see, and so much more. This almanac is available worldwide as a printed notebook, a wall calendar, or a PDF download. Use the code THATWITCH10 to get 10% off at checkout for yours today. And now, back to the show. Okay. So, first and foremost, one of my favorite ways of organizing my days and my weeks combines two different systems of thought. One are planetary day rulers, and the other is department days or block days. This has also been referred to. So planetary day rulers is simply looking at the planetary ruler of that day. <laughs> How redundant is that? Um, so we'll run through them super quick. We've done it lots of times, though. Um, Monday is ruled by the moon. Tuesday is ruled by Mars. Wednesday is ruled by Mercury. Thursday is ruled by Jupiter. Friday is ruled by Venus. Saturday is ruled by Saturn. And Sunday is ruled by the sun. And you can rewind and pause that if you need, but I didn't want to go too, too slow. Um, those are the planetary day rulers. Know the vibe traits and energy of that planet and you can start to astrologically align with the vibe and the different tasks and events of that day. There's a million ways to use planetary rulers, okay? A million. Um you can take that could be your Jupiter, right? Maybe on Thursdays you really associate Jupiter with your natal Jupiter. Maybe it's a day to connect with transiting Jupiter and you take a look at and take inspiration for that day based on where Jupiter is currently going to be on that day. It's totally, totally up to you. Um, it's whatever feels right. But I personally find that one of the simplest ways to incorporate planetary day rulers into your schedule is planning the tasks and responsibilities for that day as in line with the different lessons and strengths of that planet as much as possible. Easiest example is Mondays and Tuesdays. <clears throat> Monday, moon, 
Tuesday, Mars, super different planetary <laughs> energies. <laughs> um, Monday, even if Monday for you is a regular work day, I am so blessed and lucky that Mondays don't have to be a work day for me anymore. I use it as kind of a catch up y sort of back end day. I still respond and talk to clients on Mondays, but um, I don't push. It is like work is not even nearly at the top of my priority list that day. So many other things are. One of those things is going to be meeting my own emotional needs because Monday is ruled by the moon. Now, even if Monday is a work day for you <clears throat> and you don't have that flexibility, right, to stay home and not make work one of your top priorities, you can still make meeting your emotional needs at the top of that priority list. So you would ask yourself, what are some ways I can incorporate that into my regular Mondays, okay? Um, and, and then Tuesday, for example, <clears throat> completely different energy than Mondays, ruled by the moon. Mars, day of action, planet of action. Depending on your Mars placement, especially, or your relationship with Mars energy, I should say, this very likely could be a very, very highly productive day for you. Um, it certainly is one of my most productive days. It's why I released the podcast um, on as Tuesday is one of my days. It's one of my most social and interactive days, Gemini, Mars. Um, <clears throat> So do you see how this could be different? I overload in a way. I overload my Tuesdays a little bit because I know I can handle it. Do you know why I can handle it? Because on Mondays, I don't prioritize work and I meet my emotional needs as much as possible so that I feel super fucking ready for Tuesdays, okay? Um, I was having, oh my God, great lesson. I was having therapy at 11 a.m. on Tuesdays. <laughs> No, it's so funny to say out loud because I'm like, yeah, that's ridiculous. Why did I do that? Um, I wasn't thinking at all. This is, again, I wasn't taking all of the umbrellas into consideration. I was just looking at my therapy appointment and empty spots on my schedule when I put that recurring appointment in. <clears throat> I just worked for me, worked for my counselor, boom, bada bing. And um, <laughs> Lo and behold, shocking, after about a month or two of doing some really, really good, but very deep and cathartic work in every single therapy session, uh, it was really hard to start my week that, that way. My Tuesdays were going to shit because I needed to turn them into a Monday all of a sudden and do all kinds of, of repairing and self-care work after, you know, talking about a bunch of triggering shit in therapy. So <clears throat> I switched that around. I looked at my whole overall schedule and was like, ah, how can I make this be more aligned and work for me? Um, and I put it for me, I put it at the end of my week for crying out loud. But do you, do you see a little bit how, because I know this about myself, because I've been tracking my patterns and I know myself with planetary days and rulers and that, that overall vibe of each day, I was able after a month or two, like I said, step back and be like, what is going amiss here? Like I'm doing all these good things. I'm, go I'm going to therapy for crying out loud. Like why is my schedule and time management not getting better? Oh, because this is not the most efficient day and time to be doing this on. I know that Tuesdays I'm really, really focused on other that is a really productive and successful day for me. I should actually keep it that way. What's a better day to focus and reflect more on self so that I can meet any of those personal care needs that I need before or after a big therapy appointment, okay? <clears throat> now, um, department days and block days. This concept is the idea that you can make a whole day for one specific type of task. This doesn't work for everybody, which is why you can also break this into blocks or times of the day as well. But some people will do like a full day for client. That's a client day. We book clients on that day. Another day, this is back-end work day. On this day, I only do back-end work on my computer or whatever. Um, think, right? See these kind of themes coming out? now. <clears throat> depending on your job, depending on your business, uh, you might not be able to dedicate a whole entire day 
So instead, you might look at a day and look at what are a couple different departments that could be dedicated to that day. And essentially, the whole idea behind doing it this way is you're helping breaking up large macro tasks into smaller and micro and more manageable tasks and duties, okay? Um, So I don't do super, super hard department days other than here, I was going to give you guys like what my overall week looks like because it's a blend of planetary rulers and kind of the planetary vibe for the day plus department days. First of all, I see clients every other week, okay? So every other week in my calendar, um, and this is just one of the benefits of being an entrepreneur and uh, making my own schedule, I block out a full week every other week, and that's called an integration week. It's, I have to implement that because I don't have an HR department. I don't have a front desk staff. I don't have a custodial staff for my house, right? All these different things that companies, employers have access to that their employees don't have to do. I have to do all of those different departments. I also have to take care of myself as a human being. I have to go to the dentist. I have to go to the doctor. My daughter does. I have to go to the grocery store. I have to keep this house livable and clean for my well-being, health, and mental health, right? Um, All of those things. So this is why I do an integration week because that, and this is something that I learned from my, uh, from my business coach, Kate Visser, long, long ago. And it was a life changer to my business scheduling. Um, The only thing I kind of what I tweaked and added from what I learned in my coaching was I added that astrological and spiritual layer. And I really, on integration weeks, um, I try to cast an intention for every single week. And on my integration weeks, the intentions I create are much more self, family, and, um, you know, social and personal kind of focus. Um, or there's a spiritual focus there or some kind of hobby or, or study, whatever it is, you know, whatever it is at the time. Um, and then my client weeks are, these are much more professional forward facing in my intentions. Okay. I am much more interactive on my platforms in general. Right. So, um, this was, this was like the first step in getting out of corporate nine to five mindset and really creating a schedule from scratch that actually served me as a human being first and why I'm able to have such successful and really quality client relationships and client experience because of these umbrellas, because I come first and then my people come first, and then my livelihood, right? And so I'm able to build this strong foundation and build this strong pyramid, right, from the ground up. And that's why we really flourish at the top there, flourish in the in the livelihood category there. Um, with planetary days, so every other week I don't see clients, <clears throat> but uh, then each week, no matter what, on Mondays, like I said, I really don't work. On uh, Mondays, this is a day that I'm almost always doing laundry on Mondays. I rarely actually get to it on Sunday. I always mean to. And then by the time Sunday comes, I'm like, I'll just do it tomorrow. So I usually do Monday laundry day. This is a day that I prioritize being with my daughter. So I'm home with her, just me and her on Mondays and Fridays. And Mondays are days that I do a lot of self-study Um, any kind of catch up that I need to do or a little mini prep work for the week. That's going to make my week easier. That could be work, work, like professional prep work or meal prep or laundry or tidying, anything like that. That's going to make the week easier. I do that. And I try to include Blair as much as possible in all of those things. So we're also like connecting that way. I also take, uh, multiple breaks for just time with her on that day. So I really prioritize mom on Mondays and on Fridays. And we have our alone time on the, on those days as well. And we have our independent time. Um, but I make it a really, really top priority to stop what I'm doing in those chores and prep tasks and stuff like that and play with her. 
Um, Mondays, I also wash the sheets because I'm doing laundry and I take a shower because that's one of the best ways uh, as far as my emotional experience and needs go, right? Monday emotions. Um, plus I'm Pisces moon. No wonder I take a shower. Um, I love getting like me clean into a clean bed on a Monday night at the beginning of the week. It just, uh, it is one of my most sacred rituals that I have. And um, it it's the little things like that. So that's Mondays. Uh, my Tuesdays, These are days that I, you know, kind of like I said, I book a good amount of activity for myself, primarily really interactive um, tasks for myself because I feel really, really social. I feel really uh, kind of in that connection vibe. And so that's why this is a great day to release podcast app podcast episodes for me because I get messages from all of you every week when I release podcast episodes. So releasing those on a day that I feel really social and open and ready to connect with others, that's what makes that uh, so aligned within my schedule. If I had episodes coming out on Sundays when I kind of shut myself off from the world, that would not align with who I am and my energy very well. Wednesdays for me. Uh, so this is Mercury rule day. This is a day that I like to do correspondence. So I've had emails come out on Wednesdays. This is also a big day for content creation for me. So I'm in writing mode. I'm in communication mode um, and information processing mode. And so Wednesdays are a wonderful, wonderful day for me to create content. So I do lots and lots of recording on Wednesdays. This episode right now, you're hearing it later on a Tuesday. It's getting recorded on a Wednesday, though. Um, Sometimes that content creation is layered in uh, in between some client calls. And sometimes I don't have any clients that day, right? If it's on an integration week. And so Wednesdays are a really great day uh, for me to create anything for upcoming episodes, upcoming events or classes or anything like that. Uh, This is a great content creation day for me. Thursdays. Thursdays being Jupiter ruled and having that kind of generous, optimistic vibe that Jupiter brings, this is a day that I set aside for gratitude work. No matter what I do on that day, whether it's really interactive with people or I really work behind the scenes by myself, whether I spend a lot of time with my family that day or just a lot of time by myself that day, This is a day that I, because of that Jupiter ruling, I make sure to practice a lot of gratitude on that day. I also give myself (coughs) permission to do abundance work on that day as well. When we're saying thank you to Jupiter, we should ask for more. Honestly, Jupiter is this really generous and giving energy. And so I set time aside or my, my... Honestly, it used to be setting time aside and it's more morphed into a mindset overall that trickles down throughout the day. And I let myself ask those big things. I want this new client to sign. I'm shooting for big podcast numbers. I'm shooting for a really successful upcoming launch. Whatever it is, I ask for blessings and for generosity in those areas on that day. And I make sure to stop and pause and really connect with and thank my guides and my gods and my higher self and the universe for every little thing I possibly can on that day. Because I've been doing this for so long. Um, It's so much more of habit now, but like as good little wins happen throughout the day on Thursdays, this day more than any other day of the week, I remember to stop and say, oh my God, thank you so much for this. Um, so that's my my day itself. Uh, it kind of is up in the air. Sometimes Tuesday ends up being really, really professional, forward-facing, and sometimes Thursday, I think, I did I just say Tuesday? 
if I did, sorry, I meant to say Thursday. Um, but sometimes Thursdays end up being a lot more me centric either way, because of that Jupiter ruling, I give myself permission to rule that day. However the fuck I want and need to that day. That's kind of how Thursdays end up Friday ruled by Venus. Um, it's definitely a play day for me. I like to do a little bit of work in the morning. I like to do any kind of responding or checking in with my clients uh, that I want to do with my platforms or whatever early hours of the morning. If there's any catch up work I need to do in the morning, I like to do that. I like to try and clock out by around 11 o'clock, like 11 a.m. or 12 noon on Fridays. And I really, really make them play days. So Mondays, like I said, I'm doing a lot of catch up um, and a lot of prep work, but I'm still, you know, taking breaks with Blairy. Fridays are way more Blairy centric. They're way more mom centric and way more me centric. So if um, I have Blair that day, so like when she's in school, she's in school for a big chunk of the morning and Fridays are like some serious me time. Uh, when she's in school. If I need to catch up on a couple things, that's great. But I really, really, really try and utilize that me time and like go to the gym and take my time, take a really, really good luxurious shower afterwards, really get ready in a way that just feels good that day, whether it's comfy or kind of styled and sassed up or whatever. But either way, Fridays are play day for me. And I find that more often than not by Friday night, My husband and I, by the end of the week, we love doing alone together nights is what I call them. And it means that we are technically together um, in the same room. This is after baby bedtime, by the way. Uh, We're technically in the same room, but usually like he's playing games. Like let's say that's his like decompression time. Like he'll be playing games or watching a movie or a show or whatever. And I'm on my computer. And what I've been trying to utilize that computer time for is uh, to take some kind of class that I've been wanting to take. So I sign up for different workshops and classes and pay for them all the time. And they just sit there and they would do that for so long. And I finally started paying attention to our pattern like, oh, Friday, Venus Day, like this is play day. We want to do what we want to do. If we don't feel like having a date night on Friday or whatever, you know what I mean? Just because it's our first night really, really together by the end of the week, right? Um, Let's still lean in what we want to do. What does playing mean to you? So sometimes that is taking one of those fun classes. Uh, Maybe it's like really, really educational, but sometimes it's more personal development or sometimes it's more just fun kind of workshop, you know, that's not necessarily you know, educational based. It's kind of hard to describe, I guess. Um, You know, if I want to watch a new moon ceremony, that's a good example. There's a new moon ceremony that I didn't get to catch live um, in Astrology Hub's membership. I'm in that membership. And so Friday night is a night that I'll watch that. It's not necessarily, again, like a class. Do you see what I'm saying? It's a, it's a ceremony that was done that I didn't get to make live and I'll, I'll use Friday to make time for that. But it's also just when I let myself play. So if I feel like I'm in a gamer mode, I do that on Friday nights. If I just want to play Wizarding World of Harry, of Hogwarts, or no, it's called, it's called uh, a Hogwarts mystery. <laughs> That's the game that I play on my phone. No shame. I seriously love that game. It's like a Sim style Harry Potter game. I'm obsessed. Um, I'll do that. Or I have a Harry Potter bejeweled game. It's like Candy Crush, but Harry Potter. (laughs) So sometimes I do the game thing. Or sometimes I numb out on TikTok or Pinterest, whatever it is. But Fridays are play day. This is important time. This is important downtime. That is productive. Don't forget, okay? Saturdays and Sundays, keep in mind because they're on the weekend. Sometimes there's social plans to take into consideration and to layer in here. Um, But more than anything, these are family focus centric days for me. This is very tied to both Saturn and the sun, which is the rulers of Saturday and Sunday. Um, Because A, for me, my Saturn's in my fifth house of parenting and family, quite honestly. But that's one of my deepest values um, is and most core values. And our core values definitely connect to 
our Saturn and our sun placements, quite honestly. So these are very, very sacred days to me. I really try and spend them with my family, whatever that is that we do, whether it's staying home and not letting anyone come over, or it's us going and spending time with our extended family, or spending time with our friends, or us going on an adventure together. Uh, We balance out the day and usually have some independent time as well. And then more often than not, Saturday and Sunday nights end up being this natural evening where my husband and I feel really gravitated towards spending more quality time with each other. That's when we have our movie night together or our game night together or our date night together, okay? So this is a good general look at my overall week. And because I have paid attention to these these patterns, because I pay attention to these planetary rulers and because of my own intentions that I cast, I have developed an overall consistency where I can do that, where I can run through each day of the week and overall tell you, yeah, I've actually developed somewhat of a pretty consistent schedule. Yeah, this does benefit my mental health because I don't try and do everything in one day, every single day of the week, like we're kind of taught to do quite honestly. So that is how I overall kind of branch and bleed together (laughs) the planetary rulers and kind of (coughs) uh, department days for myself. It's going to look really unique and really individual to each person. But just for an example, I hope that that helps. Now, uh, some other quick things that I wanted to go over with you are um, some correspondences, some ideas for rituals, and um, really helpful tools, honestly. When it comes to tools, calendars, planners, apps, websites, software, right? Whatever these tools are for you. Um, Don't be afraid to experiment and try stuff out. That's how you find the things that you love. So it might feel like at one time, like, oh my God, I have so many different scheduling apps. That's all right. You're trying stuff out. You're seeing the ones that you like the most. This, you know, there'll be times when I'm utilizing so many different systems and softwares. Um, But I'm glad that I've done that because I've been able to see, oh, these are the ones that I naturally gravitate toward. Now that I've given them some time, these are the ones that actually help me. These are the ones that actually, you know, I'm able to, you know, apply and put into practice for myself. Eh, This one I haven't even logged on in a couple of weeks. You know what I mean? So let yourself experiment with different softwares and, and calendar apps and things like that. When it comes to astrologically aligning your schedule um, and really taking that extra step to working with the transits. This is where astrological planners and astrological calendars really, really, really come into play. So that's why I was so excited to, um, that this episode was scheduled or scheduled was sponsored by Honeycomb Collective. Like we, we visited with our sponsor earlier in the show. So, (coughs) um, you already know if you've been around here anyways, even before the, the sponsorship for today, I love my personal astrological almanac when it comes to my planning and really aligning my schedule to my individual life. Um, I use the both the mundane transits in the almanac as well as the natal transits to not only plan things for myself, but to understand my current experience and the current experience of those around me. Now, um, I also use the Magic of Eye Planner. You've definitely heard me, if you've been around here for a while, I'm sure you've heard me talk about the Magic of Eye Planner. This is a little bit a little more common in what we see most astrological planners uh, featuring, which is the mundane transits with a little bit of journaling and planning kind of thrown in there, right? The, The actual planner has a layout and a structure that helps you visually see the different transits Um, as well as some different learning tools within the planner to understand the energy behind those 
those transits. And then the cool thing about planners that are like Magic of Eye that are also kind of journals at the same time is they really encourage the scheduling and intention setting process. So that's why I use both the almanac and the planner all the time. I mash them and use them together all the time because yes, I have the mundane transits in the magic of eye planner, but I don't have any of my natal, my custom natal transits in there. And so I always, always have my honeycomb planner open to the same week right in front of me so that I can take myself, right? When we talk about the umbrellas of priorities, so I can take the you into consideration. Um, And then I take your people, right? The collective outside of that into consideration with the transits. But (coughs) I find that having a journal style planner like the Magic of Eye really helps me incorporate my actual spirituality and witchcraft and intentions into my planning Um, and not getting only stuck on just the astrology. I'm, I'm applying it as well. That's why I really like having some kind of physical, tangible journal and planner. Um, other tools that I find insanely helpful when it comes to scheduling, planning, and astrologically aligning your time is um, planetary hours. There is a little bit of planetary hours breakdown and explanation in the Magic of Eye Planner. Um, But if you want to get super, super accurate, Lunarium is my favorite resource. And you can check the show notes for the link to Lunarium. It's also always in the link hub um, within our resources page. Okay. It's always in my astrological resources. I use planetary hours to uh, set intentions or set more intentional times for myself. I do this in my business for like automations, like anything that I have, oh, I'm scheduling this post for this day in June. I'll go pull up the Lunarium, uh, page for that specific day. And I'll take a look at the planetary hours And usually, you know, I already have a planetary energy in mind. It's already kind of vibrating with that energy. Or I'll look through the planetary hours of that day and I'll be like, I know I kind of want to shoot for around midday that this post goes live. Um, Or I want to shoot for around the afternoon to go live in that witch school, whatever that thing is that I'm, you know, I'm selecting a time for, for my calendar. And I will get it really close to. Um or start something at the exact hour that that planet, let's say I schedule something for the exact hour of Venus on a certain day. Um, But Venus rules that whole hour and then it moves to the next planet, okay? So you can also just get close, like I said. Oh, I wanna shoot for around noon this day. Venus goes in at 11.35 a.m. to 12.35. Perfect. I'm going to shoot for noon that day. You see what I'm saying? And I'm going to, I'm going to dedicate that to Venus or, or this task or, or event, whatever it is I'm scheduling. It really ties in with uh, Venus vibes. Do you see what I'm saying? So that's kind of a way you can use planetary hours. And like I said, there's a good little quick breakdown in the Magic of Eye Planner if you already have that. Um, but Lunarium is a really awesome free resource for the super, super exact times uh, for your locality. I also, I'm really going to refer you to those main resources in the link hub already. So astro-seek.com, because it has so many different calculators and generators on there, and you can basically generate and calculate any chart that you want to um, and need to. It is one of my go-tos for planning as well, Um, especially if I'm doing big, big long-term goals and I'm looking at those bigger planetary transits. Okay, Danny, when is the next time uh, that Venus is going to be in Sagittarius next? I don't know why I'm on Venus so much right now, (laughs) but... um, 
that's where some of those cal- those free calculators and generators online can be really, really helpful, especially for those longer term goals and things like that. This is how all of your favorite astrologers uh, know all those dates and stuff is because they use really handy tools that kind of neat and tidy print a table, if you will, of all of those, those dates and movements for them. So those are some of my favorites. And, you know, don't forget to check out the show notes for a awesome 10% off coupon for Honeycomb for your personal almanac. I promise you it's going to change everything about the way that you do your planning. I'm, I'm so excited to hear what you all think of it. <clears throat> and lastly, wanted to go over some correspondences, like I said, and some ritual inspiration for you all. So when it comes to scheduling and planning, some different intentions that I think are really beneficial to work with or or keep in mind are, um, let's see here, focus, self-love, protection, and success. These are just jumping off points, obviously. Um, There are so many different intentions and focus words, you know, that you could use. But I thought that these were all really great energies because focus helps us keep our eye on the prize. And especially when it comes to maintaining the three umbrella priorities, right? So focus is a wonderful energy. Self-love helps us remember that we give ourselves permission to put ourselves first when it comes to creating our schedule and how we spend our time, okay? Uh, protection, fortify those boundaries <laughs> and success. Of course, we want this schedule and the way we spend our time to actually get us to thrive. So, um, for focus, some of the different correspondences associated with focus. So some of the colors, uh, and there, these lists, just so you know, a little disclaimer are not all inclusive. These are big, broad intentions, and they have tons of magical associations with them. This is just a jumping off point for you. But for focus, some of the colors associated are brown. I love that. Anything grounding, definitely going to help you focus. Brown, red, violet, white, and yellow. Um, Brown and red, very, very grounding and rooted. That makes sense. Violet and white, um, very associated with some of the higher chakras and activating those higher energy centers. And then yellow is definitely an air and mercury color, which is wonderful for focus and concentration of the mind. Some different herbs associated with this, um, different herbs and plants, if you will. Basil, bergamot, cedar, garlic, lavender, peppermint. These lists are seriously so long. There's so many different uh, plants and herbs and scents and things like that associated with these, but just to get you kind of started. And I tried to go with pretty common stuff that would be hopefully easy for everybody to find. And then some crystals associated with focus are amzonite, amethyst, carnelian, fluorite, and clear quartz. Honestly, anything clear is going to help you clear your mind. And then working with air and earth elements, really beneficial for focus. For self-love, as far as colors go, the top color associated with self-love, are you ready? It's your favorite color. (laughs) Whatever is your favorite color and just brings you that vibration of self-love, that's the best color to use. But we also associate pink, yellow, red, and orange as well. Um, As far as kind of the plant life and herbs and things, roses, hibiscus flowers, sunflowers, really any flowers, uh, cedar again, lemon, orange, especially blood orange, but any citrus, um, and then hyacinths, um, which are, I love hyacinths so much, uh, all wonderful promoters and boosters of self-love. Some crystals to get you started are agate, jasper, carnelian. These are super grounding. So that makes a lot of sense, uh, really connecting to self. Uh, Moonstone, labradorite, lapis lazuli, malachite, and rose quartz. Rose quartz gets all the glory and it is very effective, but there's plenty of other stones that are good for self-love. 
elements, honestly, all four elements. And in fact, working specifically with all four for harmony and balance is the best way, I think, to really use elements to boost self-love. For protection, honestly, any color can protect you. Um, you can program about any color to do anything you want it to do. But truly, any color can protect you depending on your association with it. But I think just straight up the most, most effective is black. Um, and then coming in at a very close second is brown. Blue is a great one. So is silver, gold, white, and yellow. Really, really effective colors for protection. As far as plant associations go, <clears throat> birch wood or birch trees, cypress, any kind of tree, and that strength of a tree, okay, is going to be very protective. Um, so like elder, literally any tree. Um, so birch, cypress, but also cinnamon, dandelion, mugwort, rosemary. Rosemary is one of the best protectors of your psyche and your power. Um, and then valerian, big protector. Uh, crystals associated with protection, millions of them, but anything that's really deep and dark in color is going to do a wonderful job at protecting you and putting up those firm boundaries. But for more specific examples, agate, amethyst, hematite, obsidian, onyx, petrified wood is wonderful, pyrite, quartz, and my personal favorite is tourmaline. It's just my go-to is black tourmaline. Uh, elements, same, same exact concept as self-love. Honestly, the best way is to work with all of them. They all have different protection properties within them. I would call on the air element to protect my mind. I call on the earth element to protect my environment and my physical body. Fire, I would really tap into for that, that passion and rage, honestly, and then water to cleanse and heal as well. All these are very important components of protection magic. So I put all four. Lastly is success. And some colors associated with success are browns and greens. So earth colors. So anything that is like fertile, abundant earth, I always think of success, um, but obviously gold and silver, as well as oranges, purples, and indigo. And then as far as <clears throat> the plants go, kind of plant family with success, basil, basil is a huge one. It's like the best attractor. Chamomile, huge for prosperity. All of these are really, really awesome <laughs> uh, for success and abundance and prosperity and all that. Basil, chamomile, cinnamon, clove, frankincense, olive, marigold, peony, patchouli, and sandalwood. It was hard for me to narrow down. Can you tell? And then as far as some crystals go, agate, aventurine, citrine, labradorite, malachite, peridot, and sodalite. All great crystals for uh, promoting success and in all endeavors. And then as far as elements go, <clears throat> honestly, earth's going to be one of the best ones. You can find success in all of them. But the reason I really associate success with earth is for that earthly physical success and wealth, right? Of attracting money and clients and those uh, abundant relationships in our life. Those, these are very earth-based themes. And so that's why I think that earth is one of the best elements to work with uh, when it comes to success. It also helps heal success wounds as well. So if you have any fears and anxieties and insecurities around success, working with the earth element is going to be very, very healing for that. As far as ideas for rituals go, honestly, what I hope for you is that I've inspired you to start incorporating your humanness and your spirituality and your love for astrology in with your scheduling and your mapping and your planning. Um, one of my biggest tips is when you sit down to revisit your schedule or to create it, whichever kind of phase or stage you're in, to create some kind of ritual around it to make it special and sacred like it should be. Uh, when we do this, we're kind of casting that intention uh, at the beginning of our schedule that our time is our most valuable and sacred asset. <clears throat> this helps us maintain those really good boundaries when we're looking at our schedule. It helps us be more realistic with our time and 
maybe even a little bit more generous with ourselves. So in some of those different correspondences I read for you, maybe you have some of those crystals. Maybe you can incorporate some of those different colors. Maybe you can work with some of those different elementals. And one of my best suggestions would be to create, let the ritual be creating an environment to schedule in. So I teach my mentorship clients to plan out and create their own uh, calendar ritual. So choosing one or two or a couple of those uh, scents, right? So maybe some of those herbs, using those essential oils and creating an aromatherapy or uh, getting an incense in one of those. Creating, using a light in the room that is one of those colors, wearing something of that color, using that color of pen or paper, whatever it is, or half of these calendars and softwares that you can use to make your schedule and planning, you're able to customize the theme. You can make a whole ritual around that. How are you, when you decorate your calendar, <clears throat> your planner, your journal, whether it's physical or digital, look at that as adorning it or anointing it. Look at that decorating process as something really, really sacred and giving and lending your power to that tool that you're working with, that calendar, that planner, whatever it is, okay? Um, use a certain type of music that puts you in the right mindset that you want to be in it. You know, maybe it's a certain type of music that gets you in that, that, Oh, I, I love my life or, or, um, God, I, you know, this just, it's hard with music. I'm trying to find an explanation for it. And the truth is music usually makes us feel something so beyond words. So whatever that is for you, whatever type of music or song or band or whatever it is, maybe you incorporate that into your, your calendar planning ritual. It can be, uh, planning it at a certain time of day on a certain day instead of creating it at home, you could go to a specific coffee shop. You could make a whole ritual and go to the library. Whatever it is, put some kind of purpose and intention and magic into it. When you're planning um, your schedule, maybe you always reach for your piece of agate because it activates your root chakra and it reminds you to connect to self and to earth and to stay present and grounded in the moment. And you just keep that every time you, you plan your schedule. That's how elaborate and effective ritual needs to be. It does not need to be more than that. It can, and that can be beautiful, but don't get bogged down by all this information and think, well, okay, Danny, I needed a step-by-step -step instruction for how to exactly do this ritual. No, you do not. You need to look within your intuition and let it guide you what different inspiration and things came up for you throughout this episode and and run with it okay now <clears throat> this was awesome I really really enjoyed talking with everybody about this today there's so much more we can always go into with this kind of thing but really I just want to leave you with the understanding that you're a human being and nothing is permanent and neither is your schedule you can create as much consistency and dependability for yourself as possible. And I think that is a noble quest. And I want you to have flexibility for yourself. Even on those weeks that your whole schedule just goes out the goddamn window, you're still doing it. You're still doing a great job at, at this human thing, okay? It's part of the ride to not be living constantly in consistency. So I hope that this helps provide some stability but not makes you feel like restricted and rigid and overwhelmed either. Okay. So thank you. Thank you for taking your valuable time and spending it here with me today. I just, I so appreciate every single last one of you. If you have any questions about any of this and um, you, or you need clarification, or if any thoughts came up for you, feel free to go ahead and send me a message over on uh, Instagram, or if you're in that witch school on Mighty Networks, you can also reach me at thatwitchnextdoor.com slash conjure that witch. And I'm just so incredibly grateful for all of you. And I love you so much. So thank you. I hope that you have a beautiful rest of your week. Make sure you stay safe. Make sure you keep having fun and stay magical out there. Hey, magical human. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of That Witch Podcast. If you want to support the show, the best way to do that is to share with a friend or give a shout out on your social media. 
You can also leave a five-star rating and review on both Apple and Spotify. And if you can't get enough of all of our witchy, magical content here in the neighborhood, you definitely want to make sure you're subscribed to my email newsletter, That Witch Gazette. It's a really fun, really convenient, one-stop shop to stay up to date on all of the news and happenings here in our neighborhood. If you have any questions, suggestions, ideas for the show, or if you'd like to sponsor an episode, you can send me a message at thatwitchnextdoor.com slash conjurethatwitch. Thank you so much. I'll see y'all next time.